Hi everyone. So this week I decided to take a little bit of a break from my Elixir static type checking project called Selectrix and instead work on updating another project I have called Ziggler. What Ziggler is, is a library that allows you to write inline low level code inside of your Elixir in the programming language called Zig. And in particular, what it does is that it takes a lot of the tricky parts of connecting Zig or any other low level language with Elixir and Erlang and makes those easy and automatic so you don't mess them up. So in particular, what I'm going to demonstrate to you is one reason why I think Zig is a particularly good candidate for doing NIF things with or foreign function interfaces between low level programming languages and the beam. And in particular, it's what's interesting to me is the level of cooperation that Zig can offer you so that your Zig programs can be a good citizen of the virtual machine that your the rest of your code is running on. Okay. So in this particular demonstration, I'm going to show you what happens when you have a memory leak. So let's take a quick look at this code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import the C standard library. And uh, these are just a couple of constants, which will establish a four gigabyte um, chunk. I'm going to store in this global memory pointer. Uh, it, it's not that important um, what it does. I just don't want it to get thrown away. And I'm going to call this function called leak with malloc. And when leak with malloc gets run, it's going to um, it's going to uh, uh, run the malloc function that you would normally find in C and allocate four gigabytes of, uh, of memory. And then it's going to convert that pointer to the correct pointer for the global memory. So let's just go ahead and run this. Um, and on the lower corner here, I have running top which will, t and the key column that you should be looking at here is this memory column. And the command that Erlang and Elixir run is called beam.smp. Now this particular instance of beam.smp, uh, and you might see other things pop up and down here, is the beam that's associated with the Elixir language server for the, for the, um, for the, for the uh, code ed editor. So what we should expect to see is another instance of beam.smp start to come up that's consuming four gigabytes every time we run playground. So let's go ahead and try that. Oops, sleep with malloc. Great. Okay, so uh, let's run this a few times. So this should have maybe grabbed about 40 gigabytes. And of course we don't see anything come up. So why is that the case? Well, the problem is that Linux is pretty clever and it will basically know that you're not using those memory that memory for anything and it will over provision. And this is actually really dangerous because if you have different programs that are over provisioning and all of a sudden one of them decides that it's going to, you know, use some of that memory, then all of a sudden the Linux kernel will freak out and say, hey, we don't have enough memory to do this. And it will, in, you know, it'll pull out something called the oom killer. And what the oom killer will do is it'll just slay one of your processes, probably the one that last requested memory, but it's not entirely clear. And you really have no say over that. Um, and that program will get destroyed. And it's kind of, it's kind of nasty. Um, so let's, let's actually make it so that we use this we use this memory. So I've got a couple of code that I'm going to just copy and paste into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function that will drop the number one into every page of memory. You can see it's complaining right now because uh, I haven't written this persist function. Yeah, so use of undeclared identifier. Let's, uh, let's write that persist function. And this is what it looks like. So Persist uh, takes no parameters and it's going to iterate over all of the pages and drop in the pointer slot 
of the first piece of that page, the number one, and it's just going to keep going until it does all one, um, one million pages. So let's go ahead and rerun this. Okay, so that's that compilation is finished, and let's let's leak with malloc. All right, so now we can see that there's a beam.smp here that's that's like rapidly consuming memory. Now, I've also written another function here called memory, which will tell us how much memory the virtual machine thinks it's running or it thinks it's using. So, let's do this. So, the weird thing is that the Erlang VM thinks that it's only consuming 28 megabytes of memory. And you know, if I go ahead and like do another leak, uh, it doesn't change, right? So I can keep leaking this, and the memory, it still thinks, you know, it still thinks everything's okay. And you know, if I keep doing this leak with malloc, uh, you can notice it's getting slower and slower. And I think this is just gonna kill it. So we just got hit by the oom killer there. Um, so the so this is what's bad about this code, right? And anything that uses c.malloc just by itself, or any sort of malloc, je malloc, pick your malloc, uh, pick your allocator. As long if, if it's like going through the C standard library without without doing anything else, it's going to um, it's not going to t be able to inform the the virtual machine that it's starting to consume memory. Um, this is a problem if you for example, are doing sort of telemetry to make sure that there aren't any memory leaks. Um, all of those, all of those things that can only see what's going on in the in the um, in the in the virtual machine will not be informed that there is a serious problem where something is leaking memory inside of your program. Okay, uh, and so if you ever have used something like App Signal to monitor your systems, AppSignal actually asks the operating system because that's the only sort of sane way to know exactly how much memory the virtual machine is taking because a lot of your things can, well, if you have a lot of NIFs, um, then they can be quietly consuming memory in a way that is invisible to the, to the virtual machine. So let's uh, do something else. Instead of using malloc, let's use, let's use a function that is more idiomatic to the way that you would want to do things if you are if you are um, using Ziggler. So here I've provided for for consumers of Ziggler an object called the beam allocator. And what this is is an allocator that uses the alloc function that the beam virtual machine pr provides for you. And it conforms to the to the Zig interface for allocators. So it's pluggable into any sort of allocator that Zig standard library provides for you or any library writer for Zig will provide for you. So, you know, out of the box, it's not thread safe, but if you want a thread safe allocator, you can plug a thread safe allocator in on top of this beam allocator um, in a way called, that's usually in the Zig community called using a backing allocator and then Voila, you will instantly have a thread safe allocator. Or let's say you have something that needs to align itself on 4K, 4K memory pages. Then you can plug it into an allocator that will always make sure that your, that your allocations occur at 4K page boundaries and will also clean up um, by itself in a clean fashion. So even, even, if, you're, even if you exceed the 4K boundary, um, uh, even if you like delete all of your memory, it won't leave anything behind. All those sorts of tricks are very easy and totally doable um, using composable allocators. There's even a great video about how you achieve this in C++. I'm going to link to that below. But the key thing is that by convention, everything that's written in Zig doesn't use a default allocator, especially if you're a library writer, not a library consumer. So you should be able to plug this allocator in and do whatever you want. 
The other nice thing about this, um, in this case I'm kind of just throwing the error away, is that unlike malloc, um, the beam alloc or the zig allocators, including the beam allocator, will throw an error if there's an allocation failure. Um, I'm not using that in this in this demo, but it's good to know that you can write safe code that will, you know, potentially avoid situations where allocating memory is impossible. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. Uh, quick look at this code. I'm going to allocate um, bytes in the count of four gigs, and then save that to this uh, buff variable. And then I'm just going to take the pointer value out of this, uh, and then throw it into into the global memory value. And then I'm going to run the persist function. Um, the per the per the persist function, excuse me. So uh, this outputs a slice, and to, we need to get the pointer from from the head of the slice, and that, that's why I need to do this buff that pointer. Uh, and then we're going to run the same persist function. That'll just ensure that the Linux kernel isn't doing any sort of weird shenanigans with virtual memory pages or anything like that, and that we're actually going to see that see the memory consumption happen. So let's run this. Okay, so playground leak with beam. Okay, so if I leak with the beam, once again you can see this beam.smp thing that's coming up, right? So now we've got 32.8, uh, 32.8, oops, I think I lost it, oh there it is. Now it's at 50, now it's at 50% of my laptop's memory. And let's lo look at what the virtual machine thinks is going on. So here, it knows that it's consuming 11 gigs of memory, right? And if I leak with Beam again, it's now going to show 15 gigs. We can do another one, and it's still going up. So the key point here is that if you use the Beam allocator, the virtual machine will be able to keep track of how much memory your program is using, and you'll be a good citizen of your virtual machine. And so that's a really good reason why you might want to use Zig for all of your NIF needs when you're programming with Elixir. So the upshot is that this week and maybe a little bit of next, I'll be working on upgrading Zig, my Zigler package to the new version of Zig, which is 0.7. And I'm probably going to implement a few exciting features like using Zig's async to manage to manage um, long long running NIFs. Um, but uh, we'll see how far I get along with that. I may wind up deciding that it's too difficult and cutting a release before that and punting that to the next version. Um, but I think there'll be a lot of really nice features available in uh, in the new version of Zig Zigler 0.7. Thank you very much for watching.